Welcome to Mount for the next one, everybody. Stand up, out to see. And let's just move around a little bit. We want to make sure that we've got enough oxygen going to the brain. And this is going to be a really great event. It's all about the physiology. Get into it. Don't worry about how you look. Just enjoy the movement. Monsters and mentors, guys. Well done, first of all, for showing up to this event. I know that sometimes you see these adverts for seminars and free seminars, and it can be a little bit overwhelming and daunting because it's like, what event do I go to that's actually going to change my life, and what event do I go to that's just a waste of my time? And that's actually one of the reasons I wanted to give it to you guys for free. Because I didn't want you guys to show up here and be like, oh my gosh, I paid so much money for no value. So rather, I'm going to flip it on its head and you're all here for free, but I'm going to give you massive, massive value in the next four days. But back to the congratulating you. It often is just a split second that we decide that we're going to take that step forward. And something happens in our mind or in our hearts where we see something and we're like, you know, Nothing's worked before, and I've got nothing to lose. And that is why I wanted to create this event with massive value that's going to give you all the tools and strategies you need now so that you can get ahead of the game, you can elevate yourself, yourself in any area of your life. And that it's really, although all the tools are going to be applicable to everybody, I'm going to show you how you can personalize the next four days just for you. Because the thing is, we're all at different parts of our journey. And even if we're at the same starting point in our journey, our journeys all look very, very different. And part of why I wanted to create Monsters and Mentors is I lived a very long time writing the story of my life based on the limiting beliefs and fears that other people put onto my life. And it took me a long time to realize that the things that I was afraid of were things that I had even experienced, but rather things that... I had backed out of because other people had bad experiences. And, you know, that experience depends on so much. Because where somebody might fail, it might be because they didn't put in enough effort, they didn't stick to it, they didn't have the correct knowledge, the skills, the right mentors, the right community. So someone's failure of something doesn't mean that you're going to fail at it either. And so this next four days, this seminar is really about showing you how to take control of your narrative. Now, how do we stop listening to the limiting beliefs and fears that other people place in our life? And how do we actually take the pen and start writing our own destiny the way we foresee it, instead of living in the safe box that other people set out for us? Because I know about you, and I can't see you at home, so you promised to play full out, you're here, you showed up, so play full out with me. That's all I'm going to ask you is keep an open mind and play full out with me over the next four days. So first question is, Raise your hand if you've ever looked back on an area of your life and think, I have no idea how I got here. Good or bad. Good or bad. You like raise your hand if you've like looked back in your life and like, I actually don't know how I ended up there. See, I had a bad experience like that where I had this beautiful checkbox and you know, there was like this checklist that society and family and friends kind of set out for me when I was growing up. And that checklist kept me really safe. 
and it allowed me to live a great life until until I checked all the boxes of going to school to get good grades because that meant I could go to college, going to college and get a good grade because that meant I could get a job, and then getting a job fresh out of college because that means I would earn money. You know, it was like you get a job, you earn money, and then you're happy. <laughs> Anyone else remember that checklist that you got? <laughs> that everyone gave us okay so hands up if you remember that checklist like you know you follow these little breadcrumbs that society says is like this is the only way to be happy and I was in my mid-20s when I had done all these things and I was like great I should be happy now and I looked at my life and I was like wow I'm miserable like I was at the lowest of lows that I'd ever been and I was like I don't understand I should be I should be really happy and of course, there was an element of definitely there was a lack of gratitude that I was experiencing, but also just I wasn't living the life that I had imagined for myself. You know, I've always been a dreamer. I've always been a creative. And I was living this mainstream chocolate box life that, you know, from the outside, I think other people think, wow, that's so cool. And on the inside, I was dying because I was like, yeah, it looks cool from the outside, but this isn't who I am. Like, I'm not mainstream, I'm creative, I, I want to dream, I want to think bigger, I want to help people, I want to I want to do more than just wait for the paycheck at the end of the month, you know, and then pay bills and then scramble and wait for the next paycheck at the end of the month. And I just felt like, I felt like I could predict my future for the next 40 years and there was no change, no growth, no joy, the relationships were crumbling around me because I was so burnt out and tired and just not alive. I was not alive. And so I turned my life around. I had a moment of grace. And so my moment of grace on my hero journey, which I'm going to explain to you in just a second, but my moment of grace was I was mindlessly watching YouTube and um, that's what I did to kind of escape I would watch YouTube, watch random YouTube videos. And I, I have to be honest, they weren't self-help videos. They were like trash YouTube videos that I watched just to like get my mind off of how miserable I was. And one day, a little pop-up that came onto YouTube and uh, I actually clicked to close it. I was like, ah, oh, don't want this rubbish. And I went to close it and my mouse slipped. I was using a trackpad and my trackpad flipped and it actually blew up the ad. And lo and behold, there was Tony Robbins in all his glory. Some of you might know him as Anthony Robbins. And he was up on my screen with this two minutes. I think it was just like two and a half, two to two and a half minutes of a motivational video that shook me. And it was the first time that I, allowed, that I allowed myself to think, maybe, maybe it's just maybe there's a possibility that I don't have to live this life. You know, maybe... I have a little bit more control over my destiny than I thought ever before, you know? And so I started to go down this rabbit hole of self-exploration and my hero's journey. And I realized that in that moment when Tony Robbins blew up on my screen and he actually became one of my mentors, you know, he became somebody that I looked up to, my mentors. I went to some of his events. And I realized that there are elements of his story that were so similar to mine. And the best thing that I could do once I had completed my hero's journey, well, one of them, was to be able to share it with others. You know, because what I, le what I learned is when I looked around, the people that I surrounded myself with were also miserable. They had also checked the list and they were convinced that they were meant to be happy, but they weren't. We were all miserable. So that's why we're here today. I'm here to show you how to take control of your narrative. And the reason we call it Monsters and Mentors is because along any journey, <laughs> we're all going to raise our hands for this one, along any decision where we decide we're going to change our life, we meet a couple of monsters. Hands up if you made a couple of monsters along your journey. Right? Okay, so raise your hands and then, yeah. Okay, so if you didn't raise your hand, you're lying on other stuff too, by the way. <laughs> okay, we've all met monsters. Now, monsters can come in the form of people. They can come in the form of people who... We decide to share this amazing dream with, and they just tell you it's never going to work. You don't have the money. You don't have the skill. They've tried it. Why you try it? You should try it. You, you shouldn't. It's going to fail. They've done it before. You know. So monsters can show up like that, or monsters can come in the form of actual emotional and mental challenges, like 
you don't feel like you're worthy enough of the future you're dreaming or you feel like you really want to change your life but where the hell do you start you know like where, where's the starting point to change my life like, I don't know how to do that you know it can come in the form of overwhelm stress of feeling like you don't have enough resources like I really want to change my life but I don't I don't have what it takes like I don't I don't have the materials I don't have what I need so oh, I'm getting a little emotional with it. So that's why I'm here to share with you what you need, how to get it, and how to slay those monsters, how to actually slay the monsters on your hero's journey. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this hero's journey thing. I'm saying that word a lot and all that phrase a lot. So the first part of the hero's journey is you meet a person. So the hero's journey is really an analogy that is used to personal development. And any of you who have done personal development work before will probably heard this term. But if you haven't, this is if this is the first time that you're hearing the term hero's journey, then what it is, is have you ever watched like an action film or like a Marvel film or any superhero movie, right? There's a series of patterns that that hero has to go through in order to like come out at the end of like the movie and be like the shining hero, right? Well, just like that, we also have hero's journey in our lives. And the fun part is, is we actually have more than one. So we don't have one hero's journey and then like life ends and you know that's forever and we all live happily ever after. Like there are multiple heroes journeys. And if you think of life as a film, we have multiple chapters, multiple films of multiple genres that happen in our life. You know, we've got some comedy in there, we've got some romance, we've got some drama, we've got some horror. Anyone has <laughs> some horror movie chapters in their life? <laughs> Raise your hand. Um We've got those movies that we thought were, oh gosh, like that was a total waste of my time. It's like an hour and a half of my life. I'll never get back. Anyone had some of those wasted time in chapters in their life where you look back and you're like, wow, that was a real waste of my life. Okay, so when we meet the hero, they're not the hero already. They're just usually somebody who has something that they know there's something more, but they're not sure what it is. And something happens in this person's life. And they get the call to adventure. It's like they're called to step up into heroship. Like it's their, their moment to become more. Their moment to step into their full potential. And usually what happens is you guys all would have experienced this at some point in your life. No matter what age you are, we all would have, we all would have received a call to adventure. And the very next thing that comes up is a monster. And that monster is where to start. And it's imposter syndrome and it's fear. So we get a couple of monsters that as soon as we feel like there may be more potential for us, a couple of monsters run with us and we actually refuse the call to adventure because fear rises up in us and we're like, you know what? Uh, I'm not happy where I am, but at least I know. I know this, this comfort of unhappiness. I don't know what's on the other side of me trying to become happier. And so we let the fear hold us back. And then comes a wise mentor, somebody who's been through this before, somebody who's had a similar experience, somebody who has overcome something great and has learned things that they want to share with you. And you meet them and you're like, oh my gosh, like this has made my journey that much easier. And it makes us a little braver. When we meet somebody who inspires us, who's done it before, who is a hero and a mentor in our eyes, it makes us feel brave enough that maybe we can try it may, maybe there's a possibility that I can do it. And if someone else out there has done it, then it means it is possible. So maybe I can do this. So you meet the mentor. You know, in like Star Wars, it would have been Yoda, right? So Yoda comes and like meets Luke Skywalker and it's like, oh, I, will, I will raise you and, and teach you how to be a Jedi, right? So that's the Star Wars version. There's a couple of others, but that's the one that springs to mind. Funny enough. All right, so... You meet the mentor, and the mentor teaches you things. In Karate Kid, it would have been wax on, wax off. Like, sometimes they're just sharing stories, and you don't even know that in that story, what that mentor is doing is giving you a few nuggets. So while I'm on that point, make sure that you've got extra paper and pen to write some things down, because not everything I'm going to speak about is in your workbook. Some of it is like a bonus. Sometimes I'll give you bonus activity. But make sure if you... If you hear something that lands for you, if you hear something and it lands deep in your core, write it down because we're going to forget 
90% of this information tomorrow. So make sure if something lands for you in the moment, write it down. Just jot it down, little star. Make sure you get it. Okay, so our mentor comes in and our mentors teach us tools, tricks, strategies. They teach us how to use what we have to become a hero. Okay, they don't make us a hero. They just give us the tools and strategies to learn how to become a hero, to teach ourselves how to become a hero. So once we have that, we get brave because we feel like we've got this. We get momentum and motivation. And so we cross the threshold and then we can't go back. You know, we know too much to go back and we know that's the only way forward. We're going to get to that point in the next four days. <laughs> I know, exciting, right? So we cross the threshold into our hero's journey. And then we face tests and trials. Because can you imagine a superhero who never has to use their superpowers? Kind of useless, right? I mean, talk about useless when you've got all this power and you're not going to use it. So trials and tribulations and tests and battles that we face in life, they're there to test how well we are building ourselves up, how well we're preparing ourselves for the struggles, for chaos, for battles, for monsters that come our way. Like, are we putting the work in our personal growth to be able to face those monsters when they come along on our journey. And they will. That is part of being a hero is we get tested. You know, we get pushed. We get pushed to the limit, really. And that's how we know that we can overcome things, is we survive those things. Okay, so we face battles. Fantastic. But those small battles, like when you look up on them, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in a second. I'm going to ask you a question. Like, have you ever gone through a really rough patch in your life? And you look back and you thought, wow, that was a really rough patch. Hands up. Okay. Probably most of us. We've looked back on a patch and thought, that was, that was rough. And a couple of years later, something worse happens. And we look back and we're like, oh my gosh. Like, if I didn't experience that little rough patch first, I may never have made it through the bigger rough patch. Anyone had that experience? Yeah. Right? Okay. So... That happens on the hero's journey. So we get we get like trials and tribulations and tests and battles, like small battles. And then we approach something called the innermost cave. And it's like all the little battles and struggles that we faced before, that we thought was difficult then, but we overcame them and we became stronger and we learned more. We, we became stronger and wiser. Prepares us for the big battle, for the big overcoming like the big war that we have to face you know in our lives and that might be moving careers it might be starting your own business it might be starting a family it might be leaving an abusive partner whatever it is it's that innermost care maybe we're facing trauma we're facing your trauma and learning how to use it in your life to do good things so that. right so we then get to the innermost cave and we fight this huge battle. And that's where we basically use all the wisdom we've learned from our current mentors, all the lessons that we learned from our small tests and trials, and we bring them all like a massive superhero. It's like the climax of the superhero movie, like where there's the big villain and the hero like takes the villain head on, like, yeah, we're going to do this. So that's basically the innermost cave. And after that great battle, there's a reward. There's a sense of purpose and fulfillment that the hero gets. And the hero is like, you know, they start to stand like Superman, like, oh yeah, I've got this, right? <laughs> so the hero starts to get really like that performance, that feeling of like, I did that, like I did that and I survived and I'm thriving. And what happens after that reward is they make the journey back home. So you can never go back, but you return to your life changed. You return to your life renewed, bigger, better, wiser, you know, stronger. Because you've learned so much from what you've just accomplished and everything. So when you come back as the hero, a lot of us think that that well, that's usually where the credits sort of roll up in in Hollywood movies. That's where the hero comes back and they're celebrated and fabulous. And then the credits roll up and that's it. But in real life, the hero's journey doesn't end there. The hero starts a new journey of learning how to become a mentor to others. And if any of you have done a personal coaching program with me, you will know that one of the biggest things I say when you start a program is, there's one rule when you finish any of my programs, it's one rule, is that you don't keep what you learned a secret. 
pay it forward. Because the only way we're going to make each other stronger, the only way that we're going to build each other up, the only way that we're going to end human suffering is if we start to pay it forward. We don't keep our success a secret, like it's my success, no one can have, you know, we actually share it with people because that's how we grow each other. That's how we end suffering. That's how we create peace. That's how we create love. That's how we heal a nation, heal a world. That's how we, we heal humankind. So everything you learn here in the next four days, I, you're probably going to be super shocked to hear this. I don't want you to keep it a secret. That's why we're doing it on YouTube, because I want people to have access to this platform for life. I want more and more people watching these videos, joining the private Facebook group so that we can build this community of people who are excited to help each other grow, who are there when one of us is having a low day, one of us or all of us will come into that person and say, hey, we've like, got this, we're here with you, like, what are you struggling with? You know, Because all of us will have skills and lessons in different areas. So if someone's having a low time on their journey, more than one of us will be able to say, cool, I've been there. Let me pay it forward and show you what I did, and maybe it will help. Okay, so uh, let us just jump right in. Okay, so I just want you to take a deep breath before we start. Whew, so nice deep breath in, hold it, and let it out. One more nice deep breath in, hold it, and let it out. Fantastic, guys. Okay. If you haven't already taken a seat, please take a seat. Rest your legs because we're going to have a lot of energy over the next four days. So rest when you can. Right. Now, the first part of our hero's journey, okay, we're going to face a monster head on. So the first monster we're going to face, I like to call it the overwhelmed monster. Okay, so if you feel like that landed for you, please write it down. The overwhelmed monster is the monster that appears immediately after you decided to make a big decision in your life. Like, it's that you've reached that breaking point in your life and like, that's it. I'm going to do this. And like, the very first thing that happens is the overwhelmed monster that says, no, but do you even know where to start? How would you even do this? Do you, do you even have the time to do this? You've tried before, but you failed. So I, I don't know. No, 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 no. And suddenly your brain starts to get this like, Overwhelmed monster attacking it, eating on it, saying, no, 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 but we don't even know where to start. You've never done this before. So you, you don't have what it takes to do this. You know, and you start to worry. You start to worry. And so the overwhelmed monster shows you that you don't know where to start. And so what I'm going to show you today first, the very first monster we're going to slay is the where to start monster. And so we're together. We're going to go through an exercise now. Now I'm going to show you how to find ground zero. Ground zero is the hero starting point. You know, and it's so important because I feel like lots of us do the thing where we want to change our life. So we'll lean into the things we're already doing really well, but we won't actually know that we're meant to be leaning into the things we're failing at because that's how we're going to get ahead. So where is ground zero? Well, I'd like to turn to the page in the workbook that's called day one. Okay, so it should be part one, day one. And this should be like a little wheel of life. I'll put the wheel of life up on the screen in a moment. But you should be able to see it. It looks like a wheel and it's got like segments in it. It's like the path. Okay. Now, this is a representation of your life. Now, we all know that life is about balance. Life is about, you know, holistic healing in different areas of our life. Now, probably looking at me and thinking, Jess, what do you mean? Like, why can't I just, you know, throw all my energy into physical exercise and then the rest of my life can improve. And you're not wrong. You're not wrong. If you throw your energy, love, and focus into one area of your life, there will be effects on the other segments of your life. However, sometimes too much energy and focus in one of these segments can deteriorate another segment if you don't know that it needs your love and attention. So for example, Hands up if you know someone who is thriving in their career, but their relationships aren't so good. Yeah. Anyone know that person? We all do. We've all met that one person that's like in their career and they're so good at it, but they struggle to find a partner. They struggle with their family relationships. They're not great communicators because they struggle to make deep, meaningful relationships because they're not practicing energy, focus, and love there. They're focusing on building themselves in their career. Have you ever noticed someone who 
is focused on only physical activity, like serious athletes, sometimes amazing athletes. We, we're all like, wow, in the world. But you'll see that their family life isn't so good. So it's about creating healing and balance growth in all areas of our life. So first exercise of the day, first monster we're going to say, let's find ground zero. What I want you to do is look at the center of that circle. Now, the center of the circle is north. That's bad. That's like, it couldn't be any worse. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to measure your happiness level in each area of your life, in every area. So center of the circle is not good. That's like really bad. As you move out the circle, that's like best, excellent, couldn't be better. It's amazing out of the floor. Okay. So you've got a little guide there. You'll see it in the top right of your worksheet there. The guide and it gives you the scale. I just want you to take 10 minutes to think about it. And you're going to color in each segment to where you are in terms of your satisfaction. Okay. Now, before you start, if you go, mm, this area, it's okay. You better not be coloring in the outside of the circle. Okay is not happy. We don't, can you imagine if you get up to heaven and God's like, how was life? And you're like, mm, it was okay. I don't think either of you will be very impressed. Okay. So make sure that when you are coloring in that segment, that you're like, okay, I love this part of my life. It's going really well or it needs work, sort of halfway down the segment, or it's awful, I suck at this area in my life, make sure it's close to the center. Okay, so I'm going to let you, I'm going to put some music on, I'm going to turn my camera off for 10 minutes, and I'm going to let you enjoy this moment to fill in your segment. I'll be with you shortly. Up with your word of life. If you're not totally finished, it's okay. We're still on that page. 
So I'm just going to carry on speaking and you're not going to fall behind. Don't worry. Remember, you can always pause this and go back. So love that journey for us. Right. Okay. So you would have colored in your wheel of life. And what I want you to do now is I want you to look at the general shape of the areas that you colored in. Like if you had to put that in one shape, look at how uneven that shape is. Like, do you have a very even wheel? Like, is it round? Or are there a couple of weird geometric shapes and sticks happening in there? Okay, some of you will notice, if not all of us, will notice that that is not a very round wheel, right? And you'll be able to see now that the areas in your life that are doing really well, where you're putting a lot of energy, focus, and love into, or maybe even an area that you're just naturally good in. Okay, so it's easy to put energy and effort into those areas because you know how to do it already. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that that very uneven shape that you've created on your wheel of life, I want you to imagine that that is a tire that you're going to put on a car. And the car, you're going to drive this car towards your future, okay, the future you want. So you've got this very uneven tire, okay, and you're going to put it on your future car, the car of the future, and you're going to get in that car and you're going to drive towards the future that you want. Now, first of all, I'm sure you can all imagine any of you who own a car or have been in a car with a flat tire will know that the ride's going to start to get a little bumpy, right? So you're going to start driving towards your future and it's going to start being a bumpy ride. And if you don't stop and change the tire, fix that tire and make the drive more even, what's going to happen is something else is going to give out. Another tire is going to give out. Another area of the tire is going to go out, so the tire is going to go completely. And when a tire totally goes, okay, when life finally falls apart, what happens to that car is it starts to veer off track. And very soon we find ourselves at a future that we had not planned for, a future that's way off the map of what we were trying to head towards. And so what I want you to understand is that if we don't fix those low satisfactory areas in your life now, if we don't take the time to learn how to elevate and grow and level up in those areas of our life, we keep making the same decisions that we're making now, the future that we're trying to drive towards, we're not going to get there. We're not going to get there. And so that is how we've just established ground zero, that there's more. We've established that hey, I've got an area to work on. That's an almost starting point, but not quite yet. I want you to identify for me, and you'll see there's some lines at the bottom of that wheel of life in your workbook. So there's some lines where you're going to write something now. Don't read ahead, or if you have already, it's fine. Okay, so what I want you to do is identify the three areas of lowest satisfaction on your wheel of life. I want you to jot them down in those lines. Don't do anything with them other than that. Just identify the three areas of lowest satisfaction that you had in your wheel of life, and I want you to then jot them down in the line below. If you have more than three at the same sort of low level of satisfaction, then choose the three that are most important to you. Choose the three that you feel right now are the most important to you in order to level up in your life. Write them down. Okay. As you're writing those down, once you finish writing them down, I'd just like to say congratulations. You've just established ground zero. You now have a starting point. And some of you might be thinking that, but how does how does fixing my relationships turn into creating massive wealth? I don't get it, Jess. Like, how does personal growth affect me and my career? Here's what you have to understand about the wheel of life is every segment affects a segment. Every area of life that you focus on affects other areas of life. Like if you let your health go, usually relationships sort of dwindle as well. If you let your personal growth go, your fun, recreation also goes down. Right? Your mental health goes down. So by fixing the low satisfaction areas in your life, you'll find that naturally the other areas grow with it. Okay? Okay, but we can't just focus on one. And so this wheel of life tool is about establishing ground zero every so often. 
So you might be thinking like, okay, but when I grow these areas in my life, what happens in the future? You do this exercise again and you see where, hey, where's the next area I'm not putting as much focus in? Where do I need to grow next? You know, what's getting out of balance here? You must check your tires. Anyone who owns a car who is in the seminar will know that you kind of need to check your tires regularly, like once a month at least. Right? We'll need to check the tires. Make sure that we're not driving on a flat tire that's going to give up and drive our future completely off the map. Right? Good. You got it. So we've just slain the first monster. Congratulations. Just put your hand up like this. I can't see you, so I'm just trusting you're playing for last. Don't let me do this on my own. Okay. Put your hand up like this. Take it around the back. You can you can use your elbow. Push it like this and give yourself a pat on the back. You just slayed the first monster, which is monster of overwhelm. So now that you've made the decision to level up in your life, you also now have the exactly where do I need to start changing and leveling up my life. You've got the three areas. You've got ground zero. We're at base camp, guys. Well done. Okay. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is just stand up because you've been sitting a little bit. So stand up. Shake the body out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it. We're not going to dance yet. We're just shaking it up. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Oh, my back leg. <laughs> and release. <laughs> Another deep breath. Hold it. And release. Okay, take a seat. And just, I want you to sit in your seat with authority. Like, you have just found ground zero, you've slain a monster, and you're about to take control of your life. So, sit in your chair like you own your life, and like you're about to write your destiny, because that's what we're doing in the next four days. So, sit like you own it. There we go. <laughs> that's better. All right, so I want you to go to the next page. We're not doing the exercise yet. I just wanted to prepare you. So go to the next page. And our next exercise deals with another monster, naturally, because we know monsters never stop coming. You know, in any good hero story, there's another villain and another villain and another villain. So here's the next villain. You've decided to change your life. You've found ground zero. Where do I start? This is where I start. Great. And then there's this awful, awful monster, one of the worst. And this one, this one is like one of those monsters that you kill it and it goes away for a bit and it just keeps coming alive. It's like a zombie monster. And this monster is called limiting beliefs. And it's one of the worst because it's invisible. And it's really difficult to fight because you can't physically punch it in the face. You've got to mentally kill it, right? You mentally have to slay that monster. So how do we do that? Okay. Well, before we go into what weapons to use in order to slay the limiting beliefs monster, I want to tell you a story. And if anything lands for you, remember, jot it down. This is not in your workbook. I told you at the beginning that my journey started with a moment of grace where a motivational YouTube video accidentally blew up on my screen and it was Anthony Robbins and it changed my life and I went down the rabbit hole. Now, part of going down that rabbit hole was realizing that although Anthony's life was very different in many ways to mine, there were some similarities that I picked up that really landed for me in his story and my story. And uh, talk about limiting beliefs. Let's talk about Tony Robbins' limiting beliefs when he was younger. Uh, Tony grew up in a little bit of a disconnected home, okay, and uh, he found himself homeless at 17, he found himself without a place to stay, and he was actually on the floor, and please do not quote me for Basin for this, like, this is how I remember the story, it may be slightly different, but the just of the story is there. Okay, so he was on the floor, the laundry room floor of a friend, okay, so he's at school, and you would work as a janitor at the school. And he was on the floor, the laundry floor of a friend's house because he had nowhere to stay one night, so he was there. And he allowed himself the possibility. Okay, He didn't tell himself that everything was fine and dandy and everything was just all right. He didn't tell himself that because anybody ever tried to talk himself out of a bad day? Hands up. Hands up if you've had a bad day and you've tried to talk yourself out of it. Okay. Hands up if it's doesn't really work for you. Yeah. yeah, because 
your mind is way smarter than that. Your mind knows when you're in a bad place. Like your mind knows. Otherwise, you wouldn't get those feelings of like, I'm not happy. I feel unfulfilled. Those feelings wouldn't happen if your brain wasn't as smart as it is. So trying to talk yourself out of it, trying to tell your brain that you are wealthy when you're not, you're happy when you're not, very really would. But Tony had a moment of grace when he discovered a little bit of a coding hack in his brain. And it was as simple as having a conversation with his mind about the possibility of things changing. Just the possibility, just if it could, if it could happen. So he allowed himself to dream. Now, any of us who've been in a low state will know that dreaming doesn't come that easy. Like nightmare come really easy, but learning to dream again is kind of hard. So I'm going to show you how to recode the brain. But so Tony allowed himself to dream. Anyway, a couple of, a couple of years went on, and he found someone who inspired him, a self-made man who had gone from you know a certain lifestyle to an elevated lifestyle. He went up to the man and said, I need to do this. Like, I mean, it's amazing. Like, tell me what's your secret. And the guy said, I went to a seminar given by, some of you may know his name, a man called Jim Rohn. I mean, for a seminar. Whoa, that's amazing. Like, that's that's great. Like, you, do you have to buy a ticket? And the guy was like, yeah, yeah, you have to buy you have to buy a ticket to go to the seminar. Oh, okay, that's cool. Tony was like, well, he was broke, by the way. And Tony was like, well, can you, like, sponsor me a ticket? And I was like, yes, I can. But I'm not going to. He was like, Tony was like, wait, wait, what? Like, I need help. I need this. You, you just said I need this and I that's gonna change my life. And you can buy me a ticket, but but you're not going to. And then I said, no. Because if I buy you a ticket, you're not gonna get as much value from that seminar than if you rather find a way to get there yourself. You know, at first, like Tony was probably like, what a jerk. Like, <laughs> he was probably thinking, I mean, anyone, I would have thought that person was a jerk. I was like, how, how rude. <laughs> you tell me I need something, but you're not going to help me get it. How dare you? And um, I think that's one of the biggest limiting beliefs we may have, is that we think we have to wait for a handout. And we don't realize how much power we're giving away when we expect other people to make it happen for us. Hands up if you've had a moment in your life where you've expected somebody else to get you there. It's okay if you haven't, but if you have, it's okay. Right, like, I think, especially when we're younger, we have this level of somebody needs to help and get there, like, and I can't do it by myself. It's one of the biggest limits we need to have. Anyway, to continue with the story, Tony did find a way. <laughs> you know, he scrounged his grape and he made a plan and he got to one of Jim Rohn's seminars. And because he had to make a plan and get there himself, he said, like, he burned through the notebook. Like, he had a pen and paper and he said he went through pens and paper and he was, like, basically writing everything down that Jim Rohn said. And he started applying these tools to his life and already his life started changing. He then later actually started working for Jim Rohn by selling some of Jim Rohn's content, you know, like selling his DVDs or his videos and his, you know, his books. So helping Jim Rohn. So Tony then worked for Jim Rohn, his mentor, the guy that changed his life in a seminar. He started working for this guy. Then he started preaching to other people, like what Jim Rohn was saying. He started sharing it. He was paying it forward. Just because he was so excited about it, he was like, guys, I've just had most life-changing information like you gotta know you gotta know and so he got excited by it and he started to learn more and he started to do extra things like neurolinguistic programming techniques and he started looking into this and soon he became his own version of Jim Rohn that he became Tony Robbins and he created this version of himself that wanted to share knowledge and help people and educate people and help people realize the amount of power they have to take control of their own life and from being homeless at 17 years old to being 28 years old and buying his own island in Fiji and building a resort on it that is now, I think, one of the top resorts in the world, if I'm not mistaken. 
being a man who served millions, who is fighting hunger in the world, right, millions of meals, who is fighting human trafficking, who is helping fight people who suffer from depression or just living an unfilling life. And it all started on the floor of a laundry room where he asked his brain one question. What if it was possible to change my life? And so right now, we're going to do the same for you. I want you to look at those three areas that you identified in your life as the most unsatisfactory areas. So look at them again. And I want you to be 100% honest with yourself. So just for you, remember, you have to pay full out for this to work. I need you to be 100% honest with yourself. And in each of those areas of your life, there will be one story you're telling yourself that is a limiting belief that is stopping you from leveling up in that area of your life. If it's your relationships, you might say, well, I can't talk to these people. Or they don't want to hear it. I've tried before. Won't work now. If it's finances, it might be, well, I never got the help. Everyone else got help. Trust fund baby. Okay. It can never work for me. If it's physical health, well, all the people in my family have been obese and I will be obese because it's just hereditary. Have you ever considered that you're following the same pattern as your family? So you're going to get the same outcome? So I want you to, in that first little section where there's lines, on the page, the next page after the Wheel of Life, I want you to write one limiting belief the most prominent, prominent limiting belief that you have in each of those areas that you say were the most unsatisfactory in your life. Take a few minutes to drop those down. Maybe it's something like, I don't have what it takes, I don't have the resources. Maybe it's the, uh, I can't do without my medication in order to overcome my mental, my mental health disease. Whatever it is, I want you to write down a belief, which is essentially a story. It's a story that whenever you think about changing that area of your life, it's the story you tell yourself that keeps you in your comfort zone. Now, if you're still writing, that's fine. When you're done writing, and if you're still writing and you need more time, just pause this video until you're done writing and then carry on. Isn't that great that we have a YouTube video that you can just forward and turn on and exercise and read it? Yeah. All right, so I want you to stand up. I want you to shake your body up. Okay. And do not take your real credit card. I want you to take the invisible credit card of life. So pick up your invisible credit card of life. Here it is. In your hand. Show it to the screen. So make sure that you're showing it to the camera. Wave it in my face. Invisible credit card of life. Now, I'm holding it with two hands here. Your limiting belief in any area, it's like a life credit card. It's like a life debt credit card. And every time you swipe that credit card with a limiting belief, boop, you basically tap yourself out of six months of leveling up. Think of it like that. Like, Every time you think of changing that unsatisfactory area of your life, you just take the life day credit card and you're like, boop, limiting belief, pay for that. And then you put it in your back pocket and you carry on with life for six months and pretend like you had every good reason not to elevate that area of your life. And six months later, you have to pay the interest rate on that swipe. And the interest rates come in the form of guilt and self-loathing. Anyone experience that? Yeah. Okay. So... You suddenly feel this immensely high interest rate. And you're like, cool, like I've given up six months of my life and uh, now I get interest rates to pay on top of that. It doesn't sound like a good deal, does it? No, it's not. It's like the worst bank ever. So here come the interest rates of self-loathing, hate, guilt, anger, frustration. And instead of facing it, what we do is we take out that credit card again, take it out your back pocket, and we go, ooh, this is very uncomfortable. Boop. And we swipe that limiting belief card of like, well, these are the reasons that I didn't change six months ago, and these are the reasons I'm still not going to change in the next six months. So we swipe it, 
Copy the back pocket. We'll go another six months. And six months later, damn, those interest rates are back. Self-hate, self-loathing, anger, frustration, guilt. And very soon, we get into the habit of swiping this life debt card with limiting beliefs, forgetting about the interest rates momentarily, but every time those interest rates come, they're higher and heavier, and they hurt more. And five, ten, six, I don't know, 20 years down the line, we look back in our life and think, oh my gosh, if I had just made a simple decision, put aside that limiting belief and just go for it, I wonder how different my life would be. And what we don't realize is our time here in this life, we don't know, we don't know how long we have. And can you imagine if you get to the other side and your life debt is so high that you never had the opportunity to live through your full potential, but you spent your whole life paying the high interest rates of guilt and self loathing That sucks. And so, I want you to stand up, take a deep breath. Please stay standing. Okay. I want you to choose the first limiting belief that you wrote down. And we're about to slay this mother in monster. <laughs> because it's a beast, but we're stronger. So I'm going to show you how to recode your brain very simply in like a couple of seconds. Two minutes max, two minutes max. Okay. So close your eyes and I would like you to repeat the first limiting belief that you wrote down. Now, keeping your eyes closed, I just want you to listen to what I'm about to tell you. Now, the human brain is like a computer, and it is a really, really fast computer, but it's got a two million year old program. So it's an outdated program, but it's still really fast. And that program is designed to do one thing and one thing alone. That's to keep us safe and keep us alive. So safety equals alive. Now, safety and being alive doesn't always mean we're thriving and happy. It's very different. In fact, in order to become happy, in order to be happy, in order to thrive and live a fulfilling life, chances are you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone a lot, which means the safety element isn't always going to be there. And it can't be there if we want to grow and level up because leveling up takes a certain amount of risk. When the hero faces the villain, there's always that risk that they may lose. Okay, so considering that our brain is this fast computer program, it's designed to give us quick answers because when we were in caveman style and we needed to fight or flight, we would ask our brain, how do I get out of this? And it would give us a very quick answer, okay? Now, what our brain does now still is it gives us very quick answers. But what's happened with society, with most of us is, we started to ask really poor quality questions. And if you ask Google or any search engine a poor quality question, you know you're going to get a poor quality answer. So keeping your eyes closed, I want you to imagine the scenario. Let's say I'm someone who has wanted to lose 20 kilos for five years. Wanted to lose 20 kilos for five years, but I've gained 10. Okay? And I ask my brain, why can't I just stick to a diet? Why can't I just lose this weight? My brain is going to give me an answer. It's going to say because you have no willpower. Because your, your family members are fat. It's in your, it's in your blood. It's in your family. You've never, you've always failed at attempting to have self-control over your diet. You're just too hungry. I'm pretty sure you and I both know that there's a really poor quality answer. But what about the question now? I asked my brain why I can't do something, and it gave me answers. It gave me the answers that I asked for. It gave me all the answers of why I can't do it. And so what that does is it reinforces my limiting belief of I just can't do it. 
So I want you now, again, I want you to take your limiting belief, one of the first ones you wrote down, take your limiting belief, and I want you to ask your brain the same thing that I just told you is, ask your brain, why can't I level up in this area of my life? What is, what is holding me back from leveling up in this life? In this area of my life, what is stopping me? Why can't I do it? Why do I always fail? So any one of those questions, like why do I always fail to level up in this area of my life? Ask your brain a question. And just quietly wait for your brain to provide a low quality answer. Yeah, some of you are smiling and nodding like, like, oh yeah, that, that answer again. Right. Yes, that's why. Yeah, exactly. It's a pattern you've been putting on repeat. It's a broken record, right? Okay. Open your eyes, take a deep breath. Hold it in. Let it out. Deep breath. Hold it in. Let it out. Please shake your body out. I want you to close your eyes again. Okay. Just return back to neutral. Close your eyes again. I want you to take the same limiting belief. Okay. Same limiting belief we're working on now. And you're going to ask your brain a different question. So this is what you're going to ask your brain. Repeat after me. Say it out loud if you want to and wait for your brain to answer. It's very. This exercise is very effective if you actually ask the question out loud. Your brain hears it, speaks it, and then answers it. Okay, so here we go. Same area of low satisfaction, same limiting belief. I want you to ask your brain this. If I could level up in this area of my life, or rather, if I did, if I did level up in this area of my life, what would that next level look like? One more time. If I did, just if I did, level up in this area of my life, what would my life look like? Right about now, some of you are smiling because your brain has provided you with an image. Isn't that amazing? Brain has probably provided you with an image of positivity, of smiling, of joy, of vitality. Mmm, looking good. The same area of my life, if just if I were, if it were possible, what would that look like? What, what would my life look like if I can live it? Okay, we're going to go one step further. Ask your brain this. If I, if I excel in this area of my life, if I excel, just if, if I excel in this area of my life, what would my life look like? Pick it up. See if the image is maybe not a still picture. Maybe the image is moving now. Maybe the colors are more enhanced. Maybe you can almost feel the emotion that leveling up in that area of your life would actually feel like, like that lightness, that vitality, that excitement, that joy. Keep your eyes closed. Now we're going to start the magic. Okay. Keeping your eyes closed, but making sure that your pen is ready and at hand to write. I'll give you a few seconds if you want to quickly open your eyes and just grab your pen and make sure that you're ready to quickly write down. Go back to neutral and close your eyes for me. Great. Same unsatisfactory area of your life. Okay. I want you to hold the positive image that your brain put in your mind when you asked it if you could elevate or level up in that area of your life, what would it look like? I want you to hold that image in your mind. Okay. And you're going to ask the brain another question. Here it comes. If I were to make this image a reality, where would I start to look for answers? So if I were to make this image a reality, where would I start to look for answers? Give your brain some time, and as your brain starts to give you some answers, just quickly open your eyes and write them down. Just jot them down anywhere on the page. This is not in your book, so do it at the bottom of this page. Just write them down, jot them down. Like, 
Maybe it's looking for someone who has success in this area. Maybe it's oh, going onto YouTube. Maybe it's looking for somebody who has accomplished this, who's done it before. Maybe it's a friend, family member. So where would you look for answers? If you were to make this a reality, if you were to make this leveled up version of this area of your life a reality, where would you start to look for answers? Write that down. And then go back to neutral, close your eyes. The next question you're going to ask your brain is, If I were to start this journey, who would be the three best mentors to help me make this happen? So who would be the three best mentors to help me level up in this area of my life? Give your brain some time. And if you come up with specific names or people, you don't have to know them personally. Maybe it's just for me, I don't know, Tony Robert person, but he became a mentor because I just followed him. Okay, so I followed him and I followed his instruction and that changed my life. So maybe for you, you know someone, celebrity or anyone in the personal development industry or business industry who inspires you, they can be a mentor. You can look at their books, see what they do, look at their advice, listen to their advice. So if you've got those three names, write them down. If you don't have those three names, stay exactly where you are. You can fix it. So if you don't have three mentors that spring to the front of your mind, keep your eyes closed, go back to neutral. Okay. Ask your brain this question. If I were to look for mentors, if I were to look for three mentors to help me on this journey, where would I start looking for them? Where would I find those three mentors? Mm. Isn't that amazing? When your brain gives you those answers, please write those answers down. So where would I find, if your brain didn't give you the three mentors, straight off the bat, ask your brain, if you were to do this journey, where would you look for the first three mentors to help you level up in this journey? And guess what? Your brain will give you some quality answers. Church, family, friends, the internet, TBM, you know, anything. So, like, let your brain do the answer. It actually knows. It actually knows what it means. Isn't that amazing? When you're ready, open your eyes and check it off. And I want you to just grasp how awesome that was. Something you didn't know before, you now know the answer to. And if you don't know the answer, you know where to look for the answer. That is how powerful this program is. It's designed to give us answers. But as soon as we ask poor quality questions, we're going to get poor quality answers. As soon as we ask really good quality questions, like, okay, it's all right that you don't know how to do this. But if I were to do this, where would I start looking? And that's a quality question. And your brain is designed to give you the answer. And it does. Isn't that awesome? Hey? Okay, great. So please stay standing. Please stay standing. And this is obviously tonight, okay? So after this is all done, I'd like you to do exactly the same exercise with the other two limiting beliefs. And for those of you who are like, I will never remember what Jason told us to do, don't worry, guess what? It's your first event bonus. So this is going to be an extra worksheet that you're all going to get emails. So you will get emails, the extra worksheet that's going to give you versions of poor quality questions how to turn them into good quality questions. And I'm going to then just show you the basic structure so that you can start building momentum in breaking the limiting beliefs. So first of all, raise your hand, bend it across, take your elbow, catch yourself in the back. You just slayed your second monster, which is limiting beliefs. Yes? <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, so you guys just, you smashed it. You had a limiting belief and you just talked your brain to a different momentum. You were like, okay, cool. That's a really bad question. I, that's not what I'm asking you. And you asked it some really good questions, and it gave you some really good answers. At least it gave you a starting place. I mean, did you have that before? Or is it deeper now? Do you, have, do you have a deeper level of understanding? Right. Okay, so I want you to stay standing. And, uh, oh, by the way, talking of this bonus that you're going to be getting over email. If you haven't signed up on the Google form, please sign up on the Google form because I'm emailing all the bonuses 
So you'll need to sign up in the Google form. I've left it in the description of this YouTube video. So just go fill in your name, email address, and then I will send it to you. So you'll have access to the form. We can make sure that you've got everything. I want you to have access to all these bonuses because all these tools, my life changes. Okay, so stay standing, shake it out, back to neutral. I want you to look at the next section. Now we're talking about emotions here. Don't worry, we're not going to get too blubbery here. But I want you to understand something. Our quality of life is directly linked, directly linked to the emotional state we choose to live in. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. If this lands for you, please write it down. It's not in your notebook. Our quality of life is directly linked to the emotional state that we choose to live in. Note the wording I've chosen there. The choose to live in. We actually choose to live in whatever emotional state. Okay, so emotional state, we choose that. Okay, so a limiting belief or any kind of belief will have an impact on the emotional field. If you believe you can't do something, you're not going to feel very good. You're going to have a specific emotion there that's like resentment, guilt, self-loathing, inadequacy. That's going to be a feeling. Okay, that's an emotional state you're going to live in. And when we live in a particular emotional state, so whatever emotional state we're in directly affects the decisions we make and the actions we take. Write that down, please. So the emotional state that we live in directly affects directly affects the decision we make and the actions we take. And the actions we take and the decisions we make directly affect the results and outcomes we experience in life. And the results and outcomes that we experience in our life either break or reinforce the belief that we have. Mm, powerful stuff, yeah? <laughs> so if I believe that I can't do something, if I believe that I cannot do something, I will probably live in fear, resentment, inadequacy. And if I feel like that, if, if that is the emotional home that I'm living in, do you think I'm going to take the right action and make the right decisions to overcome that belief? Probably not. Because I'll be acting in fear. So I'll probably make scared decisions, impulsive decisions, or I'll take very little action. And the results will reflect that. And those results won't be great. And so what will happen is, I'll just reinforce that limiting belief of, yeah, you know, I, I knew I couldn't do it. And so there it is. I, the, the outcome proves it. I couldn't do it. Just like that. Okay? That is why this negotiating, this conversation with the brain of, I didn't ask whether I could or couldn't do it. I asked if it was possible, how I would do it. Ah, tricking the brain, tricking the program. There we go. Bring up a little antivirus there. Okay, so our emotions are the real home that we live in. Now, how many of you know somebody who you look at their life and you're like, oh my God, they've got everything. They've got a great relationship, a great job, but they're miserable. They're like resentful, bitter people. Anyone, know? we all know at least one, one person where we're like, geez, can't you just be grateful for everything you have? And they can't because they're living in the home of an emotional state. There's something in here, there's an emotional home that they've built for themselves that isn't matching what you're seeing out here. And that's the truth. So it doesn't matter if you live in a mansion or if you live in a one bedroom apartment. Okay? It doesn't matter if you're living in your car. If your emotional state is terrible, that's the real home you're living in. If your emotional state is great, that's the real home you're living in. Now, some of you are joining us from overseas. I know we've got some people from the US here, some people from Australia. Welcome. But I'm in South Africa, and poverty is big here. Poverty is one of the biggest struggles we have in South Africa. And... Uh, I've seen poverty in so many different ways. I've been to some of our townships, which for those of you who are overseas, you may not know the term, it is rural villages. So rural villages where there's no water, there's no running water, there's no electricity. And you can clearly see this emotional home that people create for themselves. And 
some of the people living in those poverty-stricken areas are bitter and they're angry and they are violent. And others who live in the same area are smiling and they are still playing with their kids and they're getting creative with how they're teaching their kids. And I'm not saying we want to keep poverty going, but those people have created a different emotional state. And those children will grow up maybe in poverty for a while, but they'll grow up knowing that they are in control of their emotional state. It's the home that can never be taken away from us. And it's the only home that we have total control over how we build, where we build, and how long we build and live there. Isn't that beautiful? It's, it's the one home we will always have for ourselves. And you can choose which home you decide to stay in. And so moving on to that next part of the exercise, I want you to take the same limiting belief that we just negotiated with your brain, the if I could do it, where would I start? And if I did start, who would my mentor be? I want you to go to the next section. I want you to go back to the limiting belief. So that limiting story, okay? So I want you to go back to the limiting story, okay, the limiting belief story of that unsatisfactory section. I want you to say it out loud again, why you can't level up in that area. And I want you to, as you say that limiting belief out loud, of like, why can't I just level up in this area? Your brain's going to give you the limiting belief. You're going to say the limiting belief out loud. I want you to recognize the emotion that you're feeling. What emotion is that? Is it sadness? Is it guilt? Is it anger, frustration, resentment, depression, anxiousness, overwhelm? What is the what is that emotional feeling? And I want you to just close your eyes for me and really feel that emotion. The emotion that's being ignited with that limiting belief. If you have to repeat your limiting belief out loud a couple more times to really amplify what you're feeling, it's fine. And I want you to just imagine that you're turning up the intensity of that feeling. As if you had been swiping that life debt credit card for years and years later, and you're actually facing the years later rates of interest, of self-loathing, whatever that intense emotion, I want you to feel it. I want you to just amplify that emotion. Just very quietly in your own space, I want you to notice your posture. Are your shoulders drooped or are they back? Is your breathing deep or is it shallow? Or maybe you're not breathing at all. Is your head held high or is your head a little bit low? Is it dipped? Good. Very good. I just want to acknowledge the physiology. Keep your eyes closed. Great. When you've really got a name for whatever that emotion is that you're feeling, quickly write it down for me. Okay, that is the emotional home you've been building for yourself. That's the emotional home you've been feeling. Now, once you've written that emotion down, just go back to that state of feeling that emotion. Close your eyes. And I want you to ask yourself, is this the emotional home that I really want to live in for the rest of life? Your brain will give you an answer. It's a quality question. Your brain will give you a very simple yes or no answer. Is this the emotional home that I really want to live in for the rest of my life? Mm. For all my overthinkers out there, you probably have the quick yes or no answer and then you get a couple of buts coming after that, like, but this, but that. That's the limiting belief monster. It creeps in on you, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, guys, I want you to open your eyes. I want you to shake out your body. Let's not stay in that state for long. You do not like that. Okay. <sighs> I want you to close your eyes again very quickly. I'm just going to put you in a better state because we do not want you to be in a bad state for the rest of the day. That is not how we roll. Okay, so get yourself in a good state. Perfect. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to ask your brain again, if I were to level up in this area of my life and say it powerfully, say it out loud, if I were to level up in this area of my life, what would that look like? What would that look like? Let your brain give you that image. Great. When you've got that positive image that your brain's giving you, I want you to dial it up. I want you to 
intensify the colors. Imagine the colors brighter, deeper, richer. I want you to make the picture move if it's not already moving. I want it to be like a memory. Make it like a memory that you've already experienced. And I want you to then amplify the image, amplify that moment, that memory that your brain is giving you. If you leveled up in this unsatisfactory area of your life, if you leveled up, what would it look like? And I want you to then close your eyes, keep them close. I want you to then feel what you're feeling. Okay, keep your eyes closed and take a moment. Keep that image in your head. And I want you to feel the emotion that you are feeling. You're building a new emotional home. I want you to feel what you're feeling. There might be excitement. There might be surprise. There might be joy. There might be romance. There might be a bit of sexiness there. There might just be peace. It might just be a sense of peace and alignment and joy. And I want you to keep that emotion and intensify it. Fill your body with that emotion. I want you to make it run all the way down to your toes and all the way up through your head and to your fingers. Fill your body up with that emotion of the possibility. If I were to live this life, if this was the reality, what would that feel like? Yeah, I really want you to feel that emotion. And I want you to notice now, are your shoulders drooped or are they back? Are they back a little bit more? Is your head dipped or is it up a little bit more? Does your face, does it feel like your face has a little bit of a smile on it? <laughs> you feel the corner of your mouth just like reaching up there? I see some of you are, so yes. <laughs> good, good. Open your eyes for me, okay? Tell me very quickly, how quickly did we change your emotional state? That's like a second, yeah? Okay, so for those of us who, before we did this exercise, we're like, you can't choose what you're feeling. Yeah, you can. It's true that emotions pop up based on external factors. Emotions do pop up. And they last about 90 seconds. Prolonged emotions are emotions that we are choosing to focus on. And the way we choose to focus on them is we keep replaying the story in our head that makes us feel a certain way. And so all you have to do, super simple, Ask your brain what it would look like if the story was different and intensify that emotion. And then very simply, you know the, you know the rules of this game. Ask your brain, if you were to make that image a reality, where would you start? Brain will give you answers. Where would you find your maker? Who would they be? Brain will give you answers. That's its program. I want you to look at the very last question on this page. Very last question on this page. You're going to ask your brain a quality question out loud, as usual, have a conversation with your brain. Those are the, your family members and friends who are not in this seminar are going to hear you talking to yourself and thinking that. But it's okay. It's okay. We're crazy in the great way. Okay. We're good kind of crazy. <laughs> We're dreamers. Okay. So I want you to ask out loud, am I living my life with passion and purpose? So that's what you're going to ask out loud your brain. Am I living a life of passion and purpose? And your brain's going to give you a very quick yes or no. And I want you to write that answer down. Am I living a life of passion and purpose? Right now, am I living a life of passion and purpose? Yes or no? If it's yes, congratulations. That's fantastic. If it's no, we're still in the right place. Good to have you here. Great. All right, guys, so we have to slay our second monster of the day. How great are we? And I think we've had some bit of like emotional turmoil happening. So I think we need a little bit of music. So if you're sitting down, stand up and let's dance it out. Yeah, take them out, guys.
Okay, guys. <laughs> Big seat. Check it out. Sit in your chair with authority. Remember, you're the owner of your life. We're not We're not doing this. We're not doing this anymore. No, no, no. We slay those monsters. Overall monster is gone. Limiting belief monster, we smashed it. Right. Sit in that chair with authority. Own your life. Shoulders back. Head up. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Much better. Okay, guys. First of all, well done. Two monsters down. You might be feeling a little out of breath. You might be feeling like, whoa, this is this some hero's journey I've started. Well, this is just day one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. And as you know, the next page means we've probably got another monster to face. But let's look at how far we've come and celebrate how amazing we've been doing. When you started today, you probably had no idea what you were in for. Or if you did, you probably didn't know when you were going to start changing your life. And that's probably been one of the biggest things holding us back. You know, when you when you can see that you want to change your life and you're like, oh, bring it, bring it, bring it. I want it, I want it. Bring, bring it, go to it. But you've got this like anchor holding you back. of like you don't even know where you're going to start. And it holds you back from taking that first step. Well, you smashed that monster today. We found ground zero. We found base camp. We know exactly where we're starting. There's three areas of your life. That's where we started. Then we thought the very next monster that always comes up is, great, I know where to start. Now, how do I do it? And that limiting belief monster comes up and starts saying, how, how can you do it? Do you really think you can? I don't think you can. And we start to enforce the limiting belief monsters by asking it questions of like, yeah, you're probably right. So what do you think I should do? And it doesn't give us quality answers. Well, you just learned the weapon to wield is a good quality question. Good quality question, give it to your brain out loud, your brain provides quality answers. So you basically are just slipping through that invisible layer, that invisible limiting belief monster's veil, and making that limiting belief a limitless belief. Just by saying, but what if? And if I were to, what would that look like? Where would I start? You know, if I were to make this happen, where would, where would I start making this image a reality? Your brain gives you the answer. So you just took limiting beliefs and turned them into limiting this belief. You just took emotion that would break you and you learned how to turn them into emotions that will make you. Yeah, you did that. And you did it in like five minutes. How easy was that? So what we're learning now is in that hero's journey, we're facing those tests and trials. And we're looking back and we're like, oh my gosh, that looked so much scarier before. And I know how to deal with that now. And suddenly it's not that scary anymore. And here's the next monster. Now, this monster is the one I call frustration. It is the frustration monster. And it's frustrating and annoying because what it does is it gets up in your camera like this. And you can't actually see what's going on. You can't actually see the goal ahead because it goes like this. Yeah. And it totally traps your vision for what you're trying to get to. And it's really frustrating because you've started and you've got that power and that motivation of like, I smashed my limiting beliefs, let's do this. And then the frustration monster is like all up in your face. Like, yeah, you can't see how to get there. Okay, so that is the monster we're going to deal with now. Okay, hands up if, you, if you're familiar with this monster. Yeah. Basically, every time you set a goal and you actually get the light of fire in your soul to do it, then that, that frustration monster comes in and like, yeah, and how do you expect to do this? You're like, oh, yeah, that. Okay, so... The best way to slay the frustration monster that clouds your vision is to shoot it with an arrow of clarity. Write that down. The best way to slay the monster of frustration that clouds our vision is to shoot it with an arrow of clarity. Right. Arrow of clarity. And so to do that, we need to make what we call smart goals. Some of you may already know this acronym. For those of you who don't and you're here for the first time, welcome. Nice to see you. 
a SMART goal. SMART stands for an acronym, okay? So S is for specific, M is for measurable, A is for achievable, R is for relevant, and T is for time bound. Now, if that sounds very confusing, don't worry. It is in your workbook, so you don't have to catch all that, and I'm going to explain it to you. When we look at those unsatisfactory areas of our life, and we know we want to level up, if we don't make the level up goal specific, it's so much easier for the frustration monster to cloud our vision of how to get there, okay? Because if we don't have a specific goal, it makes it really difficult to measure where we are in the journey of achievement. Like, am I this far along in the goal? Am I this far along in the goal? Am I like going backwards? I don't know. So for example, those of you who might have had your unsatisfactory area as finances, like maybe it's like my financial security is super low right? Your goal might be as simple as, well, to level up. I want more money. That is great. So if I gave you 10 bucks right now, you would have more money than you did a second ago, but it wouldn't actually level you up in your life, would it? It, wouldn't, it probably wouldn't last 24 hours. Probably couldn't, I mean, today's, today's society of market pace, you probably wouldn't be able to buy much at all. But you got more money than you had a second ago. So can you see how important it is that we make our goals specific enough so that we can measure how far we need to go, how to break that up, and how far along we are in the journey? So the first step is we're going to do this, okay? So you're going to do this for each of your areas of unsatisfactory life segments. So each area that was unsatisfactory for you, you're going to do this exercise for each of them. I'm going to do one with you now, okay? And then you're going to do the others later. Here we go. Are you ready? Let's do this. I want you to choose the one area that is most unsatisfactory for you. Okay, so out of the three areas, you have to look at the three areas that you're least satisfied with, which is the one that really, really, really want to level up in, okay? And together... I want you to write down, so in the first block, you'll see it like this, I'm going to hold it up like this. So, oh, can you see that? <laughs> you can't see it. Okay, oh, there. Okay, there we go. There it is. Okay, so in that block, I would like you to write a goal, a goal that you're moving towards, a goal that you believe will just take you that next step up. Not all the way to the, not all the way to the outer edge of the circle, not like from north to 100, like, no, no, no. Baby step, hero's journey. The hero's journey, not a hero's leap. Yes? Okay, we take the step. So, the very next level up, okay, in that unsatisfactory area of your life, what would be the very next level up? I would like you to write a goal for that. And I'd like you to make it specific. I'll give you some examples. So, we we use finances as an example for the first one. So, let's carry on with that. So, if it's about you want to make more money, Okay, get specific with how much more money you want to make. Okay, so if it's like, I would like an extra 50,000 rand in my bank account. Okay, here we go. Okay, 50,000 rand, that's number. If it's like, I want 20,000 rand or 2 million rand or half a million rand, make sure you have a number. Okay, and just before you all get excited, those of you who are putting, I want 100 billion dollars or rand or whatever currency in my account. That is admirable. But we're, we're looking at goals that you can achieve within the next year. Okay, so if you can do that, that's amazing. And we should definitely apply to sleep on TDM's public forum and in our inner circle membership because I need to know what you're doing. But make it realistic. Okay, and this is where we, we really amplify the it's a smart goal. You know, saying things like, I want a unicorn for Christmas is amazing. And there'll be versions of that dream that can be true. But in reality, you know, so make sure that it's something that is really the next level up. If you've got a hundred bucks in your account and you're trying to go from a hundred to a hundred billion, okay, that is not the next level up in that area of your life. So remember, it's just the very next level up. What is the specific goal? 
if it's a physical health thing, let's say a lot, a lot of women, and I'm generalizing here, so please do not be offended. I'm just saying, in my personal experience with coaching, a lot of women will come and say, well, they want to lose weight, okay? And same thing. Great, you want to lose weight. You can lose 200 grams by tomorrow. You know, just, like, don't drink too much water. Like, fast for a day. 200 grams, gone. But is that 200 grams that you lost actually going to affect your life in any way? Probably not. You know, you're probably going to binge eat afterwards. You're not going to feel it on your pants. It's like, no. Okay, so get clear on how much weight you want to lose exactly. Maybe it's gaining weight. I mean, it's a gaining weight. But maybe it's specific. Like, is it 10 kilos? Is it 5 kilos? Is it 20 kilos? Make the goal specific. You need to be able to measure it. Okay? Good. Once you've got a specific goal, we get to the measurable part. And what I want you to do is, I want you to try and break up your specific goal into five measurable steps. Five measurable steps. Five measurable steps. So I want you to break that down. Five measurable steps. So if it was, I want to have an extra 50K in my account, you would break it into 10K steps. Like, cool. Every 10K, I know that I'm X far on my journey. Okay? So then you know how far you are on your journey. Okay? If it's, I wanted to lose five kilos, then every one kilo is a step in your journey. Right? Good. Okay, so make sure that you can break it down. If it's something to do with relationships, because I think this comes up quite often, is like, how do, I, how do I measure where I am in a relationship? Well, one way is measuring how many fights you have now on a regular basis and how few fights you have in the end. I mean, we don't ever want zero, zero conflict. Conflict is actually a great place to grow in a relationship. But things like you could measure how the fight went, okay? So how many fights, the consistency of fights, how you reacted, how you responded, make it measurable in terms of like, okay, well, maybe the next level up for you in that area is just committing to date night once a week, okay? And then you can say, well, every five dates I go on, that's that's another step. Because within five dates, you will already start learning new things about your body. So you can say every five dates, okay, so five times five, so I would go on at least 25 dates with my partner. Just to get to know them, just to reconnect, just 25 days. So every five days, you're like, okay, that's where I am on this next level up. And in between that, you can say what lessons you learned. So how many lessons did you learn between each of those steps? You want to write down that sort of thing. So like after this first leap in my measurable goal assessment, this is what I've learned so far. This is what I need to change. This is what I still need to work on. That's allowing you to measure your progress, and that is huge. So if it's something that can't have a like a monetary or kilo or a number value like that, try and break it down like that into your emotional steps of X amount of days, X amount of lessons, so many things I still need to learn. That's how we break that up. Okay. Good job. So once you've done that, if you haven't finished it, just remember, you can pause this and you can go back. And you can go forward, you can go back and go forward and you can just stay here. So if you're done, let's just carry on. If you're not, pause it and carry on when you are. You're good. Okay, so we've got a specific goal. We've got five increments of measurement. So five steps we know, like every time I achieve one of these, I'm X far on my journey. Okay. It needs to be achievable. Okay, so again, it's just a reiteration of make sure you're going a level up in that satisfactory thing that you're not trying to go from zero to 100, okay? It's like the quickest way to get burnout and the quickest way to disappoint yourself and get overwhelmed and anxious is to be like, okay, I'm going to go from nothing to everything in like two days. Like, don't put that pressure on yourself, okay? <laughs> this is the hero's journey. It's not the hero's journey. All right, so is it achievable? Now, achievable also means things like, do you have everything you need right now to make that happen? Like, if you wanted to go on 25 dates with your partner to improve your relationship, do you have 25 date ideas? And remember, you're not going to want to make all of those ideas cost lots of money because money doesn't equal good relationship. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so you want to be like, cool, a picnic, uh, a music day where we just go and listen to music and we decide what we like. If we don't like, we can make a shared playlist. Cooking together at home. Mm, okay, making something for each other. So anything like that. Okay, so do you have what you need now? If you find, you know, I don't have the particular skill that I know I need in order to achieve this goal, okay, put it down as one of your measure of as one of your your measuring steps. So one of the five measuring steps of like in order to achieve this goal, I need to get the skill. Okay, so one of the steps will be I need to master the skill. I need to learn and practice the skill in order for me to get to this level and this level and this level and this level. Okay, so make sure it's achievable. Relevant. I couldn't stress this area enough. Now, when I'm talking about relevant, yes, we mean it needs to be relevant to that segment of your life that's unsatisfactory, blah, blah, blah. But when I'm mentioning relevant, what I mean is it needs to align with your core desires. Now, hands up if you've ever tried to achieve something for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, usually, even if you do it, it doesn't feel as great as you wanted to. Like, you're happy, the other person's happy that you achieved that thing, but it doesn't really make you feel like, ooh, for very long. Generally speaking, goals that we make to impress other people generally don't happen. Okay, we usually tap out and we usually start to resent the other people and that's not fair. So you want to make sure you're doing it for you. If you put down there that you want to lose 20 kilos, please make sure you're doing it for your health and for your confidence, not so that someone will love you more. Please make sure that if you are putting things like I want more money down, that you're doing it because you're wanting to improve your lifestyle, not because you're trying to impress other people. So relevant needs to be, is it relevant to your core soul desires? Is it something that will light your soul on fire? Like once you accomplish this, once you accomplish this goal, are you going to feel like you're living with passion and purpose, like you are fulfilled? Like, is that giving you what you need? So make sure it's relevant to what your core is asking for. And if you're like, ah, oh, I'm not sure. Well, guess what? It is a great time to ask your brain a quality question. Oh, brain, is this goal really in alignment with what I truly, truly desire? Your brain will say yes or no. Yes or no. And then you can ask your brain, if it's a no, you can ask your brain, well, what is it that I really want in this area of my life? And guess what? Your brain's going to give you an answer. You may not like the answer, but it will give you a quality answer for a quality question. And all you need to do is follow, follow the instructions. You already have everything you need in you right now. Your brain has pretty much every answer. And if it doesn't, your brain knows where to look for the answer. That's how amazing your brain is. Okay, so we've got achievable, relevant, now, now, time bound. Okay, why do we want to set a deadline for a goal? Okay, it's not to create stress and anxiety, but it is to create a level of urgency. Now, has anybody set like a New Year's resolution where you're like, throughout the course of a year, this is kind of what I want to work towards? Okay, hands up if you set New Year's resolutions for 2024. Okay, hands up if you've already given up on most of those resolutions, if not at least one of them. <laughs> okay. Great. So the reason we want to have a deadline for any resolution or any goal is it creates a sense of urgency. It makes us be like, okay, well, I can't just like relax because I've got a deadline to me. Like it's got to be now. And the easiest way, if some of you are like, well, I don't know, I don't know where to set that deadline. Look at your measurable steps. And your measurable steps are an indication of how long it's going to take you. So if you're earning 5K a month, but you want to earn 10K a month, you need to look at if you can actually make 10K a month or if you need to create a longer, a longer time-bound date. So instead of saying, I'm going to break up 50K over five months, I'm going to break up 50K over 10 months. Okay, so every two months will be like my next step. 
if it's the relationship, why not? I want to go on 25 dates. So five dates a month can get a little intense. So you might want to break that goal up over a year. Okay. Depends on how well you're getting along with your partner. You may love that. <laughs> okay. Make sure you're making time for yourself there. Okay. So anyway, so look at how you've broken up your measuring sticks of your goal. And that should give you a good indication. Here we go. It's not even under. Okay. That should give you... That's so cute. That should give you a really good indication of, okay, this is how I need to break this up. Now, for those of you who are still confused in terms of time bound, here's the thing. You don't want to make your deadline so soon that it's going to totally freak you out and you're just going to give up on the goal because you're like, you know what, I'm panicking. I, I can't. Like, it's just too much to handle right now. You don't want to make it too soon, okay? In the same breath, you don't want to make it so far that you can chill out and be like, ah, I'll start it next month or like next year or the year after that. Okay, so we don't want to be swiping that credit that credit card, that life debt credit card. You don't want to be swiping that. So you want it to be like urgent enough that you're like, I need to consistently wake up every day and work on this. Okay, but not so urgent that it's impossible. Great. So... We've only half killed the frustration monster. Okay. So it's kind of still flailing on the floor a little bit. Okay. So write your deadline. And while you're writing your deadline, okay, I'm going to give you the other key ingredient to properly finishing the frustration monster. Like for real. Cutting off the head. Cutting off the head of the beast. Let's do this. Okay. So while you're writing the deadline for that first goal, the biggest thing we can do in order to really crush the frustration monster is to get a second hero on board with that. And that second hero is called the accountability sidekick. Okay? It's not the main character. Okay? So, like, you know, in any hero movie, like Batman and Robin, okay, we're talking Robin here. Okay? Batman is Batman, he's the hero. Robin is the sidekick. Okay, but without Robin, Batman wouldn't always make it, right? Like he needs Robin. Okay, so the quickest way to kill a frustration monster is to get your accountability sidekick. Okay, now those of us who are here, who are feeling the need for change, who are feeling like we need to level up, what you might realize is if you look around you, all the people you currently have in your life are the same people who have put you in the state that you, you're in now. We're not blaming them. We're just saying that they're happy for you to stay exactly where you are, which means you need a different crowd. You need a different community to help you level up to the next level because the community you're in now has led you to be in a certain state. Okay, so in order to change that state, you also need to expand and broaden your community. We're not talking about burning bridges and cutting people off, by the way. So, no. We're just talking about expanding your community so that you can make the shift to the next level of that area in your life that you're not happy with. And so, if you haven't already, you're welcome to talk to Bible. If you haven't already, join the private Facebook group, okay? This is your homework. This is your homework for tonight, okay? Remember, you want to play for life. You're the hero. You're the author of your destiny. We want you to play for life. We want you to get maximum value from this event. It is free, but I want you to pretend like you've actually paid the 4,000 plus rand to be here. So just pretend that you've actually paid that amount of money to be here. So you really squeeze out the value, okay? If you haven't already, join the private Facebook group. And for homework, I'd like you to choose one, one of your smart goals to share in the group, okay? This group is about finding people who will inspire you, motivate you, keep you accountable and check in with you. And if you're having a low day on your hero's journey, you've got a community to fall back on. You will say, it's okay. It's okay you're having a low day. What seems to be the problem? And guarantee there'll be other heroes in that community who have faced similar challenges, who will be able to guide you through that dark time. Mm. So you have everything you need in that Facebook group. Okay, if you're wondering how to get to that Facebook group, you're going to fill in the form in the description of the YouTube video. Fill in the form and we'll email you the private link. 
get the invite to the link, we'll let you in, and you've got a community. So I would like you to share one of your goals. So one of your smart goals in the group. You can either you can choose your your level of of engagement here. You can either type it out as a post. So this is the typed out post of my specific goal. Okay. Or you can take this a video of yourself. You can take a video of yourself sharing that goal and posting it on the community. Okay. Remember that community is about inspiring each other and motivating each other. Okay. So we're there to support each other. It's the best place to be. Like you're never going to find a community as ready to see you win as a community that is built on helping people elevate and is excited for people to innovate. And your success is their success and their success is your success. That's what's great about it. And every time one of us levels up, we can be like, guys, this is what I learned. Check it out. We can help each other grow faster. Okay? So when you do this homework, the only things I want you to share is what is the specific goal? So just one. What is the specific goal? What are your five measuring steps? How are you going to break it up? And when is the deadline? So when is that time-bound deadline that you've set for this goal? And you're only going to choose one. So not all three, just one. What is the specific goal? What are the five increments of measuring this goal that you're going to use? And when is the deadline for this goal? Good job. Otherwise, what I'd like you to do for the rest of the evening is fill in the other goals, so the other areas of the life. So you want to do your other SMART goals, so all the areas that we haven't done yet. You just want to make sure that you cover those, get those done, so that you're ready for day two. It's going to be another war for the day. You're going to be slaying more monsters. But guys, as soon as you post in that Facebook group, you would have found your your accountability sidekicks. In fact, you're going to have more than one because there's more than one of us in the group. So you'll have many accountability sidekicks who are there to cheer you on and help you on your journey. And that is the best way to kill the frustration monster. Guys, super well done. Before we close off today, I think we just need... A little bit of music, don't you? So just a little bit of dancing, I think. Yeah. What about this? Hey, yeah, that's way better. <laughs> dance it out, guys. Thank you so much. This was day one. You did freaking awesome. Don't forget that you can still invite people to join us tomorrow and they can watch video one, day one, in their spare time so they can join at any time. If you found value today, invite a friend. Let's get that community grow. Let's build a community of people and viewers who want to help each other grow. Bye, guys. Thanks.